life growing up, to begin with, was lovely. It was warm, family loving you, family accepting you. But then as you slowly grow up, you start to realize that you're different from the others. You're scared to tell others that you have feelings um, towards the same sex um, because you don't realize that there are others like you out there. How do you tell someone, especially a family brought up Muslim, that you're attracted to men? You kind of find yourself hiding behind a black veil. Hiding behind your true self. Hiding behind who you really and truly are. And you feel like your, your worth and your truth will never ever be validated because there's nobody out there like you who can validate who you are. I then find myself asking so many questions about why me? You know, why, why am I in this position? Why do I have this mindset? Why could I not just be like all the rest? And that then kind of causes you to have these nightmares. These nightmares where you find yourself running, endless running, dark alleyway, just running from something, not knowing what you're running from, a problem, a nightmare. And that nightmare just seems to be continuous and continuous and it's on loop every time you go to sleep, every time you're worried that somebody's going to find out who you are and what your real truth is, you find yourself back in that sequence of nightmares where you're running and running. Growing up, I didn't have any role models. I, I felt extremely alone. I felt extremely defenseless, extremely alienated because there wasn't anybody like me. There wasn't anybody that I could look up to and go, wow, that person looks like me. There was no South Asian um, role models in the music industry, film, TV. There wasn't any. I found salvation through music. Music was my coping mechanism. Music is something when I sung or when I wrote, I found um, that it took me to a place of ease, a place of comfort. Um, I then discovered the likes of Tina Turner, the likes of James Brown, the likes of um, Eartha Kitt, you know, Etta James and Prince who later on became <laughs> Prince who later on became one of my biggest biggest um, icon and muses that I looked up to especially in terms of my fashion sense Just when you think everything is working out for you, at the age of 17, you get signed to a record label um, managed by the likes of Faye Treadwell, who manages Drifters, and the late Lady Carol Black. Sadly, they're both not here with us. They took me under their wings because they saw something special. They realized that I had vocal identity. And I started recording with the likes of Angelo Starr, who was Edwin Starr's brother, um, recording my single, ready to take flight and, you know, become someone, become that role model that I've always seeked to become fathers. I was excited, I was elated, I was overwhelmed. I was happy that I was, being, I was given an opportunity to, to, to live my truth as a musician. However, 
that was not to be because with music and with my choices of le leading a creative life came hostility and that hostility came from my own people, my own community, who are an Asian community, predominantly a Muslim community. One day, I, I, was, I was told by my, my family and friends that I need to stop, that I shouldn't be doing this. And I was warned by a few people, you know, you carry on, you know, living your life as such, living your truth as such, you're going to get hurt. I didn't understand what that meant. I just let that be. So coming back from a recording session one night, I hear some heckling. I hear seven Asian men um, calling my name, asking me to come to them. And I found myself back in that nightmare, that nightmare where I was running, when I didn't know who I was, when I couldn't be who I was, running from something. This time I was running from a real situation. These seven men cornered me and I was brutally attacked to the point where, to the point where I was pronounced dead in the hospital. I had to have major surgery to save my life. And at that young age, you feel like, you feel like your whole world just collapses and just, you break. record deal gone all those opportunities gone because they wanted to take it away from me the attackers attacked me because of my sexual orientation but what they forget is at that young age I really didn't know my sexual orientation myself but let me tell you one thing I may have fallen once but when I got up and I started to walk again I never fell again I, I realized that I couldn't be in my faith because my faith had let me down um, I wish I, I wish there was others out there that I could have gone to who were like me at that time. I now know that there are many organizations and groups that support and encourage and empower young LGBTQIA Muslims. Um, but when I was growing up, there wasn't that. So understandably, I, um, I lost my faith. I lost my respect as such, because I wasn't respected as a person. I couldn't live my truth, and I wanted to. I wanted to be a, the Muslim, and I wanted to pray five times a day, but I wasn't allowed, I wasn't given that opportunity. So I found my salvation through other means, through spiritual means, through watching Tina Turner's life, for example, and how Tina Turner um, got through so much pain and adversity through her relationship with Ike and how spiritualism, how chanting and how Buddhism came into her life and put her at ease, gave her a sense of power, comfort, warmth and her own self-mastery. And later on in the years, you know, I, I was fascinated by this. But then later on in my life, I, 
I got to meet amazing friends, especially from the Thai community, who, who taught me a lot. Well, I found my feet again. I found structure in my life. I was grounded. I found a lot of spiritual healing in my life. And through that, I realized that once knocked down, I will never ever, ever be in a position to be knocked down again. I was gonna rise and rise and rise and keep going. 2004, the tsunami took place and I was asked to do something. And by then I've already created lots of relationships with many singers, realized that I'm a good director in music. I can put voices together and create wonderful harmonies. And so I created a gospel choir. and approached the Prince's Trust. And I asked them for their help and they helped me. The Prince's Trust became not just a, a, a charity that helped, they became very good friends. 2012 came, I get told that I've been selected to carry the Olympic torch. That moment you feel is gonna be the highlight of your year you feel like, wow, you know, I'm representing the Prince's Trust at a year that is so monumental for the United Kingdom. You feel almost like the Queen's Guard. I was never told that um, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales and um, Camilla were gonna be there. I wasn't told. But then there was that the whole world's media waiting. Once I did my run, I came to the end to do the kissing over to the other torch, basically. You have to hand over the flame to the next person to run the next rally. And there stood right in front of me was um, His Royal Highness Prince of Wales, Camilla. Um, I was given it all street, you know, because it was a lot of young people. And I was given it all brap brap and all this kind of business. <laughs> Um, but then when I met Israel Harris, it, my, my demeanor completely changed to, how did you say? How are you? Um, and the first thing Israel Harris said to me was, you could do with a stiff drink. And I, and I was quite taken back by that because, because of his humor. Uh, you know, I thought, you know, you know, royals have a protocol that they follow and, um, and you know, jokes were not part of it. I was wrong. I've been nominated uh, to receive a Pride of Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to say how um, incredibly proud I am of Jay Kamiraz and uh, what he has actually overcome. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate him with immense warmth. <laughs> And that was a turning point in my life because I realized I had arrived. And carrying an Olympic torch, winning a Pride of Britain, being made an ambassador of the Prince's Trust, you have this sense of peace. This year's Princess Trust winner, Jay Kamiras. Can I just say, not only as a Princess Trust, changed my life. I'd like to thank His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales for changing the lives of many, many thousands of young people out there. And on behalf of them all, I'd like to thank you. I'm very grateful. Thank you. 
I started to play around with garments and clothes, having met some wonderful designers in, throughout my life who wanted to dress me for red carpet occasions. And through those red carpet occasions, people started calling me Mr. Fabulous. Every garment that I have worn on a red carpet has been by a young designer who is striving to be the best version of themselves, a designer that is coming to the forefront. I did a lot of things with my partner, David, a lot of, lot, lot of television, a lot of comedy. They asked me to do a, um, a screen test, and that screen test was for a show called All Together Now. Mr. Fabulous, was you getting a bit emotional during that? I was getting a bit emotional, darling. The thing is, you've got triple threat. You look good, you've got personality, and you've got a voice. And in the words of Beyonce, you are Sasha Fierce, baby. And at that time, I had a big quiff, and I was, you know, uh, flamboyant. And let me tell you, it was a big quiff. Um, but they said, yes, that's what we want. We want you to, we want you to be Mr. Fabulous. We want you to be... Um, we want you to be flamboyant. And I did the pilot. The pilot then became a first series, then turned into a celebrity series, then turned into a series two. And the show on its own gave me a platform to take Mr. Fabulous to another level. And at the same time, it allowed me to show people that behind Mr. Fabulous, behind all this glitz and glamour and this amazing garments and makeup, there is a real person. My role in the LGBT community is to be a voice for other South Asian LGBTQIA members. My role in the LGBT community is to be me. And one thing that I've always lived with is this mantra. And, and I always want to teach this to everyone that I come across. And that is motivation brings conviction and conviction brings movement. In life, you have to motivate yourself and others. And those things turn into a conviction that you have to convict in, believe in, be passionate about. And those passion then turn into movement. It took many years for me and my family to reconcile. 13 years to be Exact. And um, they accept me, maybe. I don't expect them to understand. I'm not going to push them. My family, they love me. Um, they will always love me. It will take time for them to understand, but they get in there slowly, but short, small doses, I say, small doses. My message to the world is um, be that voice of change, be that voice of reason. And if you have that strength and resilience and you believe in your truth, then no one can harm you. Well, Mr. Fabulous represents triumph over adversity. Someone that inspires, empowers, and encourages others to be free within themselves and be themselves. In the words of Harry Winston, people will stare, make it worth their while. A great mind has to always be androgynous.
thing I really like about Jay is the fact that there's always an empty space next to his table. There's always room for somebody else and that's the thing that really inspires me about Jay. No matter what they say To you and me forever around Yeah, absolutely. He's been a great support of my organisation and we look up to him. He's been like an icon in the news for many gay Muslims, not just here, but across the world. Yeah. He's an inspiration, isn't he, to the breast cancer charity too. Exactly, and I think it resonates very well across all kind of genres and ethnicities as well, in the fact that it's genuine, it comes from the heart, and so it's when he's really passionate about something and gets behind a cause, it really helps the charity raise its profile, doesn't it? Yeah. To you and me forever But when he was telling us about how he was hijacked by those seven guys, you know, that I, don't, I didn't know who meant, but it made my blood boil to think that people could still do that in their state now. Yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous that things like that are still going on, but to see someone come from that the way that he has and, and rise up beyond acceptance and into actually doing and achieving all the things that he's done, I mean, that is inspirational. Seeing how Jay has got from where he started to where he is now. I mean, that's really inspirational for me to know that, you know, with hard work and determination, you know, you can you can get you can get to whatever it is you want to get to. I got to say, the first thing I said was, "Wow, wow! Oh my gosh, this man is absolutely stunning." And then I started to read uh, through his post. And I realized not only was he stunning, but his energy was so positive. He was full of hope. He was full of love. He cared about everybody. And I just felt like I could reach out and just and talk to him about anything. Cause dreamers disappear. And here we are, no matter what they say. Yeah, I know him since uh, since a while, but uh, I actually never seen this emotion today, so it touched my heart a lot. No, absolutely. Um, you always want to look like the daft guy, but yeah. uh, uh, you know, uncovering that side of himself today was uh, absolutely deep, yeah. and uh, it made me cry actually. For sure, yeah, <laughs> me you? too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> To you and me forever and a day. Didn't we show them how they blown away? I admire all the things he's been through. Uh, and I have to say, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been to half the places that I've been and met half the people that I've met because we've had some fantastic times. You know, his journey has been my journey. And, you know, I've been to Buckingham Palace. I've managed to meet, you know, I've met the Queen. I've met Prince Charles. I've met, you know, all sorts of people I would never have met without being in Jay's life. And I'm, I'm very humbled by that. And, you know, it's all thanks to him. I'm Mr. Fabulous, living my life, my truth, and that's okay with me. Yeah. It was a great honor to meet Jay when I presented him with his Prince's Trust Young Achiever Award at Pride of Britain. His commitment to helping others in spite of all the challenges in his own life is truly inspirational. <laughs> I'm so pleased to see that Jay has gone from strength to strength, both through his music and his dedication to giving back to those in need. He is a true example of how the Prince's Trust can transform a young person's life. And I'm very proud to know him. Keep doing good things. All the best, Jay. <laughs>